after we're done creating our variables, we can start uh, setting up some subs and functions for our MPC. First one I'm going to do is a function to return the texture of the entity. So we're going to use our entity model to pass one of these values uh, to um, return a source rectangle, or I'm sorry, a source texture for our MPC. So I'm going to do a public function get NPC texture as texture 2D. And again, I will probably, I may be doing away with this in the future, or I may just actually be changing it uh, from the entity model to a string value. So, um, you know, we can actually just pass a string from our map file saying, hey, uh, I want you to use this texture and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to do a select case here of NPC model and let's see first case is going to be um, we'll do model NPC model wow I can't type NPC model dot merchant what did I do wrong here this model is a type that cannot be used as an expression <laughs> duh okay because I'm calling this directly instead of using our entity model like I was supposed to. Whoops! I should not make tutorials when I'm tired. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Pretend that didn't happen. So if it is uh, the MPC model merchant, um, I am going to return the texture from textures from our texture class for the merchant. Once again, I'll say case um, in PC model. The type is princess and again we will return the princess so I don't have to keep typing these I'm going to copy and paste select princess and this one will be female And as a default texture, I'm just going to use Rad Marvin. So uh, if you know an NPC texture is not specified for any reason, uh, it will just go ahead and return him. So I'll say case else return textures dot Rad Marvin. All right. So that tells us what source texture to use. From our textures class. Next up, um, kind of get in a, get into the actual movement and update subs. These are going to be kind of large. This is where a you know bulk of our work is going to go. Oh, sorry, I got to pause here. I have a phone call. All right, sorry about that. Uh, where was I? Ah, the move MPC sub, yes. So I'm going to create a private sub called move 
NPC. Now, because we're gonna be moving this from our world screen, um, we'll be creating an instance of our NPC class in that screen. Uh, we're gonna be able to wanna monitor the, the map tile values uh, and coordinates on, from there. So I'm gonna pass the screen as an instance of our world screen class, world screen. And we also want to monitor the direction of movement. So I'm going to say direction as integer. So first thing we want to do in our movement routine <clears throat> is set the last direction to the current direction. So I'm going to say uh, last dir equals dir. And then we're going to select case for the direction and move accordingly. I say select case, dir. And as I stated before, we're going to be doing this uh, pretty much identical to how we moved our character. So I'm just going to say case one, case two, case three, case four, one, for each direction. This is going to be downward movement. Uh, this will be our left movement. This will be our right movement. And this will be our upward movement. So, first thing we need to do is verify if the next tile that our NPC wants to move to is blocked or not. Uh, we don't want them walking over blocked uh, terrain, so we want them to uh, have basic collision detection with our map tiles. So we'll say if screen, that's our world screen, dot map, dot tile list in the x coordinate and y plus one. And the reason we're doing y plus one is we're looking, uh, if we're moving downward, we're going to be moving in the plus direction on the y axis. So then we're going to check the is blocked property for that tile. So we'll say is blocked equals false. So essentially, if that tile is not blocked, then uh, we're prepared to move. So what we're going to do is increment our offset value, the one that allows us to move small amounts across the map. We don't want our uh, NPCs jumping from tile to tile. Uh, we want them to smoothly move. So we're going to say offset y plus equals our movement speed. Okay. And then we're going to say if our offset y is greater than or equal to 32, then go ahead and advance their position. So we'll say y plus equals 1. Again, we're moving downward on the y-axis. And then as soon as they have completed their move cycle, we reset the offset value to zero. So we say offset y equals zero. So that's fairly simple. Um, we should be able to save some typing here just by copying and pasting these values. Now left and right is going to be on the x-axis, so we're going to have to kind of uh, change those values around. I'll go ahead and go down to the up one first here. And this one is just going to be the opposite of the downward movement. So we're just going to say, oops, I'm going to say minus one since we'll be moving upward. And we want to decrement that. And um, 
the offset in this case is going to be decremented so we're going to say if it's negative 32 then go ahead and move in that direction so I think we got all that right uh, no we did not again we want to decrement those values um, so everything else here should be opposite so uh, we can go ahead and do our left and right values. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. And for our um, left and right values, let's see. I always end up mixing up my uh, my numbers and having to rearrange them, but <laughs> uh, hopefully I uh, won't do that here. So moving left, um, we're going to want to decrement the x value. This is going to be offset x. less than or equal to, if it's less than or equal to negative 32, then go ahead and advance to the next tile. And that should not be y, that should be x. And that should be x. Yeah, my brain is tired, so I'll probably end up having to come back and redo this, knowing me. Okay, and I'm just going to invert these values again. Set X. Ooh, see what I did there as well. Got to change that to X. So less than and again. So hopefully I didn't miss anything here. If I did, we can come back and fix it. 